What is going on everybody? It's Alex come back here with another video and today as I have promised multiple people I am doing the Eagles seven round mock draft. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. I know you Eagles fans are very very vocal and it makes it very entertaining to see Eagles and Cowboys fans go at each other. I'm not going to name any names but uh, you guys know who you are especially since uh, you were the one who requested this video in the first place so uh, again, really appreciate the fact that you guys are commenting on these videos, telling me what you want to hear, because it gives me something to do. You know, uh, obviously, staying up till 3.30 in the morning every morning because of college is not great, but uh, this is kind of my break, and I really do enjoy it. So thank you guys so much for commenting. Keep doing that. Hit the notification bell if you guys haven't already. This is going to be a fun one. Eagles, I haven't done this one in quite a while, and we've learned quite a lot this year. So let's rock it. So... First off, let's see what the hell happens, right? So T-Law, Justin Fields, yeah, this is, hey, look at that, Cowboys fans. You can't even argue with me. Panay Suel goes to number, uh, number three. Uh, but, I mean, there's nothing really crazy going on here. Again, we're going to have these stupid-ass picks, I'm telling you. But um, I wouldn't be surprised to see four quarterbacks in the top ten. I'm just going to be straight up. But Kyle Pitts, wow, there's actually quite a few picks that are replicated based off of my board. J.C. Horn here, Quiddy Pay. I could I could see that him uh, just having a massive resurgent year is pretty understandable. Jalen Waddle here, not a bad choice at all, you know. But we're here for the Eagles, not here for anything else. So Eagles, you guys need linebacker. Yes, I've I've heard you say every single time that uh, the Eagles haven't taken a linebacker since what like 1989 in the first round. But that doesn't mean that they can't, right? They, they they definitely need to. So question is, like, what else can we get? Corner, right? Uh, where are we going to get Sean Wade? I and mean, we can do that. I mean, we could definitely do that, right? Uh, Nikel Roby Coleman hasn't been doing too well, and you invest a lot of a lot of money into Darius Slay. So obviously getting a, another cornerback could definitely be a huge boost. Whoa, hold on a second. Elijah Farah Tucker was moved into the first. I'm sorry, guys, this is just new news. They just updated this, but that's kind of insane to me. Um, I have him as more of like a mid-second, but hey, I mean, can't really blame him. But Jeremiah Wusu kamora you guys are going to kill me every time, man. But you guys need a linebacker. Anything's better than Nathan, Nathan what, Jerry? Gary, uh, like you, you can't really fault uh, taking a linebacker here. And, and uh, JOK, I'm going to start calling him that because it's a little bit annoying to say Jeremiah Wusukamura is a stud. I mean, you can see him. He's rising up draft boards. He's been playing really well this year. He is a huge reason why Alvin, uh, not Alvin Kamara, Travis Etienne, uh, who I kind of think is Alvin Kamara, is got like completely fucked during that Notre Dame Notre Dame game. He has coverage skills. He has speed. He is an absolute stud. And trust me, you guys need it so badly. Don't don't try to tell me otherwise. Uh, even when fully healthy, you guys need linebacker. Like it's nobody's business. And JOK is an absolute stud. And you're seeing him move up. Uh, finally, Jason Oway is actually put in the first round. Sub four four forty at D end. That is insane on D end edge. We don't have DNs anymore, really, in the NFL. I mean, there's four three DNs, three four DNs. It it's it's annoying, guys. So obviously they have to keep it a little bit more simple here, just saying edge in general for DN. But you know, Josh Myers falling to forty seven. That's quite an interesting one, to be honest with you. But I mean, hey, uh, now ooh ooh ooh. So you guys are gonna be pissy pissy because I'm not gonna take Javon Holland here, but. Again, there's a reason why Trayvon Morig's moving up and Javon Holland's moving down. Javon Holland didn't look too solid. Uh, I think they played Stanford, right? He looked like he was getting to the ball pretty damn late, and that's against a pretty mediocre Stanford offense, right? Trayvon Morig's playing his freaking mind out. And I'm telling you, he's a big hitter, big dude. He can add so much versatility to this team. And yes, I'm not going Paris Ford again. Uh, Paris Ford's actually been falling. I'm, I have yet to watch this last week's game uh, that Pittsburgh does. And I've watched all, all the games in condensed game form because highlights, I mean, highlights for Pittsburgh, you, you, you'll you just see Paris getting like five hits, just like destroying people. But Trayvon Murray's going to be the pick here. He's an absolute monster. Top two in the country last year. Going to be one of the top uh, safeties in the country this year. He's consistent and he's playing against really good talent. And he is a big hitter. He's exactly what this team needs. Um, try to tell me otherwise. I, I mean, I can understand why you guys would try to do something like that. And just to be honest, I don't think you're going to win on that one. It, 
Trayvon Morig's playing his mind out. He could be a first round type talent. So you guys stealing um, Morig in the second, like you guys might be like stealing. That's not stealing. It, it's stealing. That is a huge, huge thing right there. Um, also, update on um, mock with trades. That's probably not going to be too, uh, too much of a possibility because of the fact that I think that in or I mean, of course, the pairs forward falls. So you guys are gonna be like, are you kidding? Me? You could have got him in the third. We, you never know what would happen. Um, oh, Javante Williams is in this draft. I did not know that. I thought he was a. I thought he was a redshirt sophomore. Um, he's a junior. Okay, Javante Williams is a stud, but you guys don't need him. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to figure out trade scenarios, and it's like requiring two first, a second, a third, and then another fourth. It's just it's kind of weird, even to move up from like five to three. Uh, it's, it seems a little bit ridiculous with their trade value thing. And I think like if a team like the Falcons want to move up to let's just say number three, they could um, they could give up like Julio Jones and maybe a second. Things like that, like where they're trying to go into full rebuild mode. And it's just, it's too unrealistic. And you guys probably wouldn't like the fact that I trade all the damn picks for one pick. And just, yeah, you guys know the drill. Um, so unfortunately, it's uh, becoming less and less of a possibility to uh, have a draft with trades. However, we are here at 82, and there are there are some good talent here. You know, Joe Tryon could definitely go in there. Um, I mean, you guys might say you guys need wide receiver, but how many, I mean, it's the damn injuries every time, right? You guys could be dealing, you guys could get another lineman, but again, you're dealing with injuries there too, right? So right now, I'm looking at that secondary. You guys need help in that secondary. Elijah Molden, if you want a stud, um, a stud nickel, not stud nickel, a stud slot, Elijah Molden's your guy. He is an absolute monster. First round grade for a lot of people who know what the fuck they're talking about. So if you guys are like, oh, he's at 130-something. Guys, this is, this is not, uh, this is kind of what I would do, okay? And he's an absolute stud, has so much versatility. Uh, he can play nickel, he can also play slot. He has some great speed, he has some great athleticism, super tight coverage. Uh, you gotta trust these Washington corners, man. They're, they're really high-end players, and that's just... Like, you just got to roll with it, you know? And that's that's honestly just the tail of the tape. And, like, Nikel Roby Coleman really is not performing well at all. So get a third-round corner that will last you and has first-round potential, right? And I don't think that you guys can get too mad at that. It's definitely somebody who will add a shit ton of value to your team, and you can never have too many corners. Never. The only reason he's down there is because he's 5'10 and probably won't be the fastest guy in the world. That's a third round type of thing to do. Like you can just take a shot on a player who doesn't have the greatest speed, but has he has a good short range burst. I don't know why it's such a big deal that he doesn't have long range speed if he's a slot corner. Um, next, ooh, edges, edges looking pretty nice right now. Uh, Jordan Smith's an absolute stud too, but um, I don't think you guys really want to go that route. And the question is, do you guys want to win now? Right. The question is, do you want to win now? Because if you don't. If you are willing to take a risk and rebuild, I have your guy right here. Broken back, but if he comes back, could be a similar situation to DK Metcalf, where it's just an absolute stud that you steal later in the draft. That is a huge possibility right there, guys. And next, I don't think I don't want to take Jack Anderson again. And like he's not worth this pick, and you guys have so much more value than that. Tight end, I mean, you guys could be getting rid of Earths. That's potential. It's definitely possible. Um, tackle, I mean. I think you guys have your option there. So honestly, I believe in you guys. And I think that you guys have some time. I don't think you're ready to win a championship yet. And I think that you guys are building through the draft again. And proud of you guys for doing that. But get a guy with unlimited potential. He has top 10 potential in the class if he comes back and he's able to play uh, at 95% of what he used to. So, I mean, it's just, it's a huge potential offer right there. And honestly, I would take it. So we'll see what happens. Um, obviously, there is some more players. There's like Jeremiah Moon falling. I've been a huge fan of Jeremiah Moon uh, because, I mean, it's just good value for your pick. Uh, but, of course, we could be going at um, an outside corner like TJ, uh, TJ Carter, which, according to stats, he doesn't look very outside corner-esque. But here is where we can take Jack Anderson. This is where you can get and help that interior of the offensive line because I'm forgetting who is uh, your left guard right now, but... Obviously, I know. Brandon Brooks, out. Um, Lane Johnson hasn't been too healthy either. Kelsey's been solid. 
and then uh, Peters, I mean, Peters is going to die soon. So you need Dillard to step in there. Jordan Mailata has been playing all right. But I don't, I mean, this is a time where you take, because you know how often you guys get injured. This is where you take a guard who's actually falling. Because, I mean, when it's whenever you see a guard's value, subtract that by a full round. And that's pretty much where you should take him. Just because, I mean, Lyman gets injured so often. I love how the light is just completely dimming as as time progresses. The sun loves to go down at an insanely fast rate. It's November, everybody. Uh, but, I mean, right now you guys are rocking with some really big stud talent. So, next, um, if you guys are wondering where I'm going to be rocking, I'm going to try to go for a wide receiver for you guys because I know your wide receiver core gets banged up every damn year. And you guys, oh, oh, you know someone I'm out, I'm eyeballing Daz Newsome or Elijah Moore. I think these guys could be a great addition to your offense. More of the slot type, good route runners. And I like Elijah Moore. More, no pun intended. But Daz Newsome, I think, could probably fit this offense a bit, be- a bit better. I think uh, Daz Newsome has a little bit more of the NFL build to him. Elijah Moore runs really good routes, but I think Daz has more athleticism. So we're going to be rocking Daz Newsome here. I mean, again, your wide receiver core is fine. But at the same time, it gets injured every freaking year. So you might as well take a shot. I know you guys have been taking a couple six-round, seven-round shots on guys before, uh, especially last year, like Hightower, if I'm not mistaken. It's like you take shots on later-round dudes, and that's that's great. And I know um, you guys are probably going to be talking about um, Jack Driscoll as a good tackle potential so you can kick back uh, Andre Dillard to guard. But again... I don't, I don't know how long that's going to last. And then also, like, Lane Johnson ain't going to last forever. Now there's Brandon Brooks. So it is what it is, guys. It's unfortunate, but that's why I'm not going to be going after a tackle this draft. Tight end, you still have Dallas Goddard. I don't think you need to draft more tight ends. Um, interior defensive linemen, unless you guys start selling and are like, screw it, we're done, then I don't think you need to do that either. And because your uh, wide receiver core gets brought down to Greg Ward or Travis Fulgham every freaking year, I'm going to be giving you guys the two best weapons, in my opinion, two best value weapons uh, at this point, Elijah Moore and uh, and also Daz Newsom. You guys can mad at that because you're like, oh, we don't need two wide receivers. It's probably true that you do. So I'm going to be rocking it. And then honestly, if we get the potential, if we get the option, we could be going Lorenzo Neal. That would be a solid option. I would like that, but I don't think it's going to be an option. And, I mean, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Oh, ooh, 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 that's a kick to the balls. Uh, yeah, I wanted to go Lorenzo Neal right there. Just give some extra help on that interior. But, ooh, Bobby Brown's a stud. Why is he down here in the seventh? I haven't seen Bobby Brown actually show up quite a bit in uh, some games. So, it's either Trey Dean on your outside or Bobby Brown. We're going to be rocking Bobby Brown. You can't be too pissy with getting some form of interior defensive line rotation. At least make Fletcher Cox last a little bit more. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a draft, guys. Uh, so uh, we'll go over it. We'll show what's up. We'll show what's going on because obviously you guys have your speed. You didn't have your route runners, right? I didn't really think, oh, well, we have another pick. Ooh, let's go. <laughs> and Trey Dean's still here, so we're going to be taking him. He's, uh, he's a, if I'm not mistaken, he's like, what, 6'1"? He's 6'3", yeah, no. Pairing him up with big play Slay could allow Trey Dean to actually have a shit ton of potential. It's the last pick of the draft. Awesome. So uh, running through the picks again, you guys finally have some help at linebacker. Like you need some help. And Trayvon Mower, you have two first round potential right here. Elijah Molden, he's a second for me. So what? First three rounds, you get three guys who are steals. I mean, that's pretty damn good. Uh, Justin Ross, top 10 potential. I mean, this team might need to go into rebuild mode. And that's the unfortunate thing. You never know. It just depends on how Wentz plays and how the injuries roll out. Jack Anderson, I mean, with how often guys get injured, you kind of need some better backups. Jack Anderson, Texas Tech, likes to run the ball pretty well. And then Daz Newsome, Elijah Moore, adding some versatility to a, a wide receiver core that dies every single year. I don't know. Y'all need to get some new, like, training staff because I'm telling you, you, I don't know what the fuck's up. And then Bobby Brown, Trey Dean, just... Two guys who I think are very good value for rotation, and you can never get too mad at it. Trading could honestly start for you guys. I, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't be surprised, and that's the last pick of the draft. So that's pretty damn good value. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, obviously, you guys weren't too hot on the uh, JOK tr- uh, pick earlier, and then the Paris Ford thing, you guys probably wanted. Uh, you guys probably wanted, shoot, what's the name out of Oregon? Javon Holland, but I think Mo Riggs so much better. And I had that in the beginning too. When I first look at the draft, I went um, all in on why do I keep blanking on the kid's name, Javon Holland? And 
after watching that last game, the first game that they played, it was just like, wow, he's getting there late. So let me know what you guys think. Obviously, um, some questionable picks. But yeah, of course, let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Regardless if you appreciate the picks or not, I hope you guys enjoyed at least some of the analysis. And maybe you can see eye to eye with me. If you don't, teach me. I'm always willing to learn from Eagles fans. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.